Now, I showed you yesterday how the US President Joe Biden, and therefore, of course, suddenly most of the media, has finally admitted the pandemic might have started when the coronavirus leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. The President has now ordered an inquiry. You don't say. All this has been clear and worthy of serious inquiry for over a year. You've heard about it on this station and in News Corp newspapers. But, you know, Trump derangement syndrome seemed to rule the roost. The Wuhan lab leak theory looks less and less like one theory worthy of investigation now and more and more like the most likely source of the pandemic. That's certainly the view of the man who headed up the US Centre for Disease Control at the time the pandemic began last year. Here he is from just a few weeks back. I'm allowed to have opinions now. You know, I am of the point of view that I still think the most likely uh, etiology of this pathogen in Wuhan was a, from a laboratory, um, you know, escaped. Uh, the other people don't believe that. That's fine. Science will eventually figure it out. It's not unusual for respiratory pathogens that are being worked on in a laboratory to infect a laboratory worker. Yeah, it's hardly a surprising conclusion. And one Australian expert who's been at the vanguard of this thinking back when it was unfashionable in the media is Flinders University Professor Nikolai Petrovsky, who joins me again now. Good to join you. Uh, good to speak to you again, Nikolai. Uh, you must be pleased to see uh, so many other people, either uh, medical specialists or people uh, who understand the practicalities of what's gone on, drawing similar conclusions to what you've had with us in the past. Yes, Chris. So, you know, it's reassuring that science is reasserting itself because my concern last year was that, you know, the possibility of a laboratory accident was always there. We've, we've seen laboratory accidents uh, cause outbreaks of viruses in the past. And I'm sure, you know, unfortunately, we'll probably see these episodes occur in the future. So it was very unscientific. Uh, for the sci world scientific community to deny the possibility that this might be the case. And so my concern was really for the integrity of science. Indeed. Science has to be open-minded. It can't be political. And one of the reasons you told us uh, last year that you were so attracted to the notion, the possibility of a lab leak was because of your scientific analysis of what had happened. You saw that this virus was so contagious in humans and you said that's unusual for a virus that has just leapt recently from humans. So let's go back to the former CDC chief uh, in the US. Uh, he has a similar conclusion. I do not believe this somehow came from a bat to a human and at that moment in time the virus that came to the human became one of the most infectious viruses that we know in humanity for human to human transmission. Normally when a pathogen goes from a zoonotic to a human, it takes a while for it to figure out how to become more and more efficient in human to human transmission. I just don't think this makes biological sense. So in the lab, do you think that that process of becoming more efficient was happening? Is that what you were suggesting? Yeah, let's just say I have coronavirus that I'm working on. Most of us in the lab, we're trying to grow a virus. We try to help make it grow better and better and better and better and better and better so we can do experiments and figure out about it. I, that's, that's the way I put it together. So all the other evidence, what we know they were working on, the lab workers getting sick, the lab being shut down for a while, put all that to, to one side, just the transmissibility of this virus is what triggers the interest of scientists like yourself. Absolutely. So, you know, as Robert Redfield explained, you know, viruses that are not used to a new host um, struggle to survive. And in fact, many cases they don't survive and they die out. Occasionally, they'll be just strong enough to survive in the new host, and then over a period of months to years, uh, they'll progressively become better and better at, at crossing from, from that host to another host. And uh, we didn't see that in this case. You know, this virus from the very first episode that we know of in December 2019 seemed really perfectly adapted to spread between humans, and that, that is highly unusual. Now, Nikolai, you're working on a vaccine project yourself. Uh, tell us about uh, how that's going, what sort of level of government support you're getting, because, importantly, the vaccine you're working on how, holds some promise of actually preventing infection, not just reducing symptoms, but preventing infection in the first place. Yeah, so, so really following from the, the very first modelling work we did at the beginning of uh, last year, which led to uh, 
surprising finding about the, the virus and its nature. Uh, you know, we were expecting the virus to eventually mutate and form into different variants. Uh, and so we designed our vaccine from day one to be able to adjust uh, to the development of those variants, even though at the time we didn't know, you know, where they would occur and what they might look like. Uh, so, so our vaccine's been able to be adapted um, over time. Uh, and it's now looking very promising in that in animal models, we're able to show uh, that it's able to produce neutralization of the different uh, variant viruses. And, and uh, I guess, uh, possibly uniquely, it seems to be able to prevent uh, transmission of the virus uh, from, from one animal to another. And, and, you know, that's what we need if we're going to break this pandemic, is to stop not just people becoming infectious themselves and getting symptoms, but those people then being able to transmit the virus to others. And, for instance, in Singapore Airport, we know that a lot of the workers at that airport, uh, even though they'd been fully vaccinated, uh, we're still transmitting the virus to other workers. So, so we do know that some of the current vaccines, although they prevent serious disease and they're important for that, uh, unfortunately, they're not working so well to block transmission. How far off for human trials are you? Well, we're already um, uh, in human trials. So, so we've completed the first stages of human trials uh, and we're just going into the, the last stages of human trials uh, as we speak. So we're certainly hoping uh, to have an outcome before the end of this year. Great stuff. Thanks for joining us again, Professor. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Professor Nikolai Petrovsky there from Flinders University. More work on another vaccine. As we've seen enough over the last six months or so, you can't get enough options when it comes to vaccines. So that is important work. We wish them all the success in the world in Adelaide with that work.